Hello and welcome to our first lesson on glucose metabolism from chapter 13. In this lesson we'll be looking at some general principles in the study of metabolic pathways and take a broad overview of glycolysis. In this chapter we'll be looking at different pathways of glucose metabolism. First we'll look at catabolism, that is glycolysis, lysis of glyco or sugar where we're breaking down the glucose monomer. Then we'll look at kind of an opposing pathway, gluconeogenesis, that is the new genesis of glucose, essentially making glucose from scratch. We'll need this pathway when our supply of glycogen is exhausted and we need more sugar. Glycogen synthesis and degradation refers to storing it long term or retrieving it. And lastly we'll look at the pentose phosphate pathway where we start with glucose and use that to generate a pentose, a five carbon sugar. Every cell needs this pathway. So in the study of metabolic pathways there's some general things to keep in mind. Remember that each step is a different chemical reaction and for that reason generally speaking each step is catalyzed by a different enzyme. In the process we're either going to release or consume free energy and our so-called carrier molecules we'll see will be ATP and NADH. Now you're used to seeing ATP as a sort of an energy carrier but don't forget NADH is also a source of energy and we'll see how when we get to chapter 15. Remember that we need to control the rate of the pathway flux, that is the flow through the pathway, and we're going to control that by changing activity of individual and distinct enzymes. So why are there so many steps in these pathways? Well, multiple steps means greater energy recovery. For instance, if we took glucose and combusted that in a single step, the amount of energy would be about 2850 kilojoules per mole. Just for point of comparison, if we burned propane, that's 2220 kilojoules per mole, and ethanol is 1300 kilojoules per mole. But I don't know about you, but it gives me a certain amount of comfort to know that my body burns fuel more efficiently than my car does. But again, if we did all of that in one step, a lot of that would be lost as heat. To lose a little bit as heat is acceptable, but we want to recover as much of that energy as possible, and by having multiple steps, that allows us to do that. So there are two general purposes for catabolic pathways. The first is to convert the energy in the starting molecule into a more usable form, and in the process we'll, we'll create multiple types of intermediates and we can use those in other pathways, more specifically in anabolic pathways. With regard to glycolysis, here's our net equation. We're going to start with one molecule of glucose, a six carbon compound, and we're essentially going to split that into two molecules of pyruvate. Those are three carbon compounds. Now you'll notice that this is catabolic. The net is an oxidative pathway and we know that because we're generating NADH, a reduced molecule. We also know it's a catabolic pathway because we net produce a certain amount of ATP. So we generate energy and that's true only for catabolic pathways. The steps of glycolysis include 10 steps and they evenly divide themselves into 5 and 5. The first 5 steps are referred to as the energy investment phase. What we'll see is that although we net energy overall, we have to invest a little energy to get things going. The last five steps are the energy payoff phase where we recoup our original investment and then some. Remember that in these pathways each enzyme catalyzes a different step and the enzyme name essentially tells you what it does. If you remember the structure of glucose and then follow the steps you can get to the other structures. So here we have an illustration of the ten steps of uh, glycolysis and their relative energy differences. So at the top here of our step we have glucose and we're going to split that into two molecules of pyruvate and that's at the end down here. And here are the ten steps in between. The height of the step is meant to represent the energy difference in that step. And so you can see some of these are very small steps and some are larger steps. So there are three steps and those are circled in green that have large negative changes in delta G. 
Remember, these are potential flux control points. In other words, th these are our best options for controlling the flow through the pathway because there's a large negative delta G, that is, it's metabolically irreversible. It's going to go in one direction and one direction only, and we could have the largest impact downstream. Remember also, these tend to be the slower steps. The enzymes are working at maximum capacity, and they can't go any faster. So the flow through the pathway can only be as fast as the slowest step. So 1, 3, and 10 steps in glycolysis, those particular steps, are possible control points. In a later video, we'll see which step is the actual control point. So the other steps, the other seven steps, the delta G changes are pretty close to zero. That is, they're near equilibrium reactions. And that means it can accommodate flux in either directions. These are the steps where we can control the flow by the relative concentrations of substrates and products. Remember, that's our mass action ratio. In our next video lesson, we're going to look at the first five steps in glycolysis, the energy investment phase, and we'll see that even though it's a catabolic pathway, we have to put a little bit of energy in the system to get things going. And we also want to see why the steps of glycolysis occur in a particular order, and I think that will help you. If you see the logic of the steps, it'll help you better to understand and remember them.